Hey, welcome back. Part four, bonding. So I've just explained at the end of part three there that we are going to create two IP addresses, but that will be shared across a bond. And the bond will be made up on the public side of ETH0 and ETH2, and on the private side, ETH1 and ETH3. And we create this bond because basically we want some sort of high availability on this system. It may be overkill, because one could argue when you look at our actual diagram here, well, you've got two routers already, so if you did have an, internet, an interface failure here, the other machine would take over once we had VRRP configured or high availability configured. Absolutely, fully understand, but to be honest, you know, having some sort of security around a, a simple cable failure is quite handy to have, and you may well want to do it. So I'm going to cover it here for the purposes of completeness. So that's what we're going to configure. So how do we actually get that to be effective on our machines? How do we actually create this bond? So it's a fairly simple thing, really. Um, we've already got all of our cabling up and running, so we're going to basically say set... Oh, I want to be in config mode, of course. And I want to go into config mode down here. So we're going to do the same thing on both machines. We're going to say set interface. And the interface that we're going to be talking to is bonding. Not Ethernet, bonding. And we're going to say bond zero. So we're declaring a bond zero. And we're going to have this on an address that will be shared across two machines. So we're going to do it on 10. Dot, uh, yeah, 159.10.12. Dot dot and how do we figure this out? Well, we go in here. And we're going to take one of these addresses here. So we're going to take 100 for this machine. And on router 2, we're going to take 101. Make sense? So that's what we're going to do. These aren't VRRP addresses. These are just the interface itself. So we want, when you look at the IP addressing in SoftLayer, you don't want to take the HSRP address. You want to take the actual one of the available addresses within the actual IP subnet. So the non-reserved addresses. Okay. So we're going to take, uh, after all that, I've forgotten that it was 100. Yeah, and we're putting it on the 26. Okay. And then we're going to set interfaces bonding, bond zero. And we're going to give it a description and we're going to say it's the public Internet. It just reminds us when we're looking at show interfaces of what the interface is. Uh, take the same again, bond zero. We're going to set up a hash policy. And that's going to be layer three plus four. And then finally, we want to actually set up a bond group. And the bond group is going to be uh, sorry, the, the bond group, the mode, the mode is going to be uh, active backup. Now, here's an interesting one. Uh, on software, you will most likely, if I do a tab, you will see the choices available. There they are. So, 802.3 AD, uh, dynamic link aggregation, is probably the favoured option. But I haven't been able to get this to work within GNS3, so I'm going to use Active Backup, which I have tested, and it does work. You will probably choose 802.3 AD because you'll have physical machines, and they will have the relevant drivers and capability. Uh, I don't have that within GNS3, or I've certainly not been able to make it work. So now we've actually described our bond and we've put it in place. We want to attach Ethernet interfaces to that bond. So this time we want to set interface and we want to go Ethernet. I'll hit the tab so you'll see the full Ethernet. And we want to say that ETH0, remembering our diagram, ETH0 is going to be a member of this bond group. Whoops, bondy. Bond 
group Bond Zero. It was a new band there, Bondy rather than Blondie. Um, first member of our Bond group, ETH Zero. We want to set the affinity, if it'll allow it. It may have set it already. It already has, so we don't really need to do it. That's fine. We now want to put in our other member. What's our other member? Zero and two, one and three. That's the way we wired this all up over here. So zero and two. Um, I won't bother with the affinity. Hey, what the hell, I will do, why not? It's gonna say it's already there, it's fine. And that is our bonding setup for uh, bond zero, our public facing side. So while we're at it, I'm gonna go down to our second machine and I'm gonna set up the public side of our uh, bond. So we want to say, just like we did on the other one, set interfaces, bonding, bond zero. It's also going to be bond zero. And its address is going to be slightly different. 159.10.12. And what was our next available address? 101. Okay. So I'm going to take 101. And that's on the 26 network also. We're going to give it a description. And we're going to say it's the public internet. We're then going to say it's hash policy is layer 2 plus 3. And then finally, we're going to say it's mode is in active backup. Now we need to add its members. So we go back to Ethernet, ETH0, and ETH0 is in bond group, bond zero. And of course, ETH2. And I'm gonna commit that as well. And I'm going to save it. I didn't commit it up here, look. I'm going to commit that and I'm going to save it. And when we do a run show interfaces, run show interfaces, there we have our bond. Now we know ETH0 is in that bond and ETH2. But they don't get IP addresses. Only the bond gets the IP address and you can treat the bond as if it was an actual Ethernet port. So that's our bond zero. Let's do our bond one while we're at it. So set interfaces, bonding, bond one. And bond one is gonna have an address on the 10.1.9. Let's go and have a look at our IP addresses. On the private side here, we're gonna have the next available, five and six. Okay, so dot five on the 26, okay? Dot five, 26. Perfect. We're gonna say its description is private network. Whoops, network. We're gonna say its hash is layer three plus four, and its mode, exactly as we had before, is active backup. Now we need to give it some members. So it's on Ethernet, ETH1, bond group, bond one. And then ETH3, bond group, bond one. Commit. Save, run, show, interfaces. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, let's do the same on the south side. Set, interfaces, bonding, bond one, address, and this one's address was 10.1.9. 
six slash 26. We can just double check that. There it is, the next available address, six. Lovely. Hit return, description is going to be private network, its hash is going to be layer 3 plus 4, and its mode is going to be active backup. Perfect. Now we'll give it its members. So we're going to do set interfaces, ethernet, eth1, because this is the private bond. And it is going to be bond group bond one. And then the other one is three, bond group bond one. Commit, save, run show interfaces perfect so we have some interfaces up we have them up and running we have two bonds so our four ethernets which look very very um which look very very stagnant unfortunately for themselves um have no entries whatsoever but we know we are using them we're using them by virtue of zero and two are in bond zero and one and three are in bond one now we could, just to make this very clear for ourselves, in case another administrator comes along, we can do set interfaces, ethernet, eth0, and put a description on here. Whoops. And we can say member of bond zero. If you want to do this, you know, why not? And we can say the same for two. And we can say the same for one, but instead it's a member of bond one and three. And commit that. Save that. Whoops, run, show interfaces. And that gives you a little bit more information. So now we know what they're being used for. I'm going to do the same down here for the hell of it. Set interfaces, ethernet, ether zero, description, member of bond zero. Bond two, might as well change that as I'm flitting past. Three, commit that, save that. Run, show, interfaces. So if another administrator comes along after you, they now know what's in what bond as well. They could have figured it out, of course, from the, uh, the bond information, show bond, but you know, at least now it's very clear on the show interfaces who's a member of what and what they're doing. So now we've got our bonds, it's time to test our bonds. So let's test our bonds. We want to test, we want to test our actual interfaces here are failing over so that we actually have some sort of high availability around these interfaces. So what do we want to do to do that? Well, we're going to need a public machine. Luckily, we had one in the diagram and a private machine, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. There's one in there, which is fine. So we want to actually start these machines up. Let's do that. And we want to give them an IP address. So um, console. Let me bring up the other one, lovely. So, this is our uh, first machine. I should have brought those up bit by bit, but yes, this will be our first machine. Um, I can't actually tell now anymore. Let's close that and uh, close that. Let's bring them up one at a time, console. Right, this is our first machine. <laughs> so, IP, uh, it's gonna be on the public. Um, 10.12.110 is the addresses I'm using for this. And it's going to have 159.10.12.100. Uh, uh, over here as our actual default gateway. 
Excellent, let's make sure this can ping 159.10.12.100. Excellent. Let's make sure we get the second machine up. Console. Second machine, IP 10.1.9.10 slash 26. And we are 10.1.9. Uh, which one is this going to come into? Let's stick it on the same one. Five. Why not? Oh, look, I've got 19. 9.5. 10.1.9.10 and 10.1.9.5. Lovely. So they're both going to the top router in here. Let's move them over here. There's no need for our router configs. So this public machine is going through the switch into router LON01. And the private machine, again, let's move them a bit again, is going to 9.5. Perfect. So that's fine. Uh, or certainly perfect for the point of view of our testing, because we're not testing high availability at the moment. We're just testing high availability of the links, making sure our bonding is working correctly. Um, can they ping each other? Ping 10.1.9.10. Let's see. Timeout, timeout. Yes. Here we go. And ping 159.10.12.1110. Perfect. So they can ping each other. They're pinging back and forth. So what happens when we lose a link? The link's gone. What happens? Let's make sure it can still see it right the way through, and it can. Let's ping it back through the other way. Perfect. Let's delete another link. Let's delete this one. Let's see what we get. Yep. Perfect. Let's turn this machine off to make sure that we're not coming through that machine, which we shouldn't be. And we're not, just in case you thought we were. <laughs> so that router is off now. Nothing will go through there. It's perfect. So we have bonding. Bonding's working. Everything's working exactly as planned. We can do exactly the same test with the south side and it would be fine as well. I'm going to just pop back in our links in here. Um, um, yes, even at zero to here. Give that a second to actually arrive. It is there, you can just see it's slightly darker. It didn't put it in quite as nicely as I would have liked. And um, we wanna add a link here as well into port one. And it is there as well. <laughs> if I actually do this, you will see that they're all there. Um, let me come out of this sort of view. Oh, come on, come out of this sort of view. And I can't really get it to to sling them out again. I'll tell you what I will do. I'm going to uh, delete it and delete it and delete and delete. Lovely. And then I'm going to populate them back in again. So this machine has come back up and running again. I'm going to take those monikers off of there. And I'm going to actually connect E0 ETH1, ETH2, to ETH8, yep, it just looks nicer this way, 1, and to ETH3, to 8, lovely, right, at least they're all back where they should be, and now if I bring back our terminals again, and bring back the other terminal too, we should be able to ping right through after a couple of timeouts. Yeah, perfect. So there you have it. It's exactly what we wanted to check. Now I could change the default gateway on these machines. So let's do that. Let's take the public IP here, show IP, and let's redo it so that it's not 100, but it's 101. And 101 is on our south side here. Zeus and um, Greek gods show interfaces. It's on 101 and 6. So 101. Just going to change that. And this one, 
I'm going to change it to 6. So they're now going through the south side machine. So I should be able to turn off the north side machine. Let's make sure they can ping each other. Yep, they can. I'm going to now, while that's in transit, I'm going to turn that one off. They're still absolutely fine, as we would have expected, because they've got nothing to do with the top machine. And now let's remove one of these. Let's delete that and see what happens. We're still getting through, exactly as we would have hoped. Oh, keep running the same command there. I want to ping. Perfect. Let's remove one of these. Delete. Should still have no effect. So we just lost two cables there, and it's still working fine. And that's exactly why you want to do bonding in terms of simple errors like cable errors or an interface uh, problem. At least you will have the bonding for some sort of rudimentary failover of an interface. Next up is to get an actual much more complex failover scenario, which is where now we have bonded interfaces, we want to set up a high availability across these two machines. So I'm just going to quickly reset everything back to where it should be. Now that we've done our testing, 7 is going to 1. Is that right? That's not right. Ethernet 2 is going to 7. That's right, yes. And Ethernet 1 is going to the back end on interface 2. That should be correct. Oh look, and it's done it again. It does this quite regularly. Let's get rid of both of those. 1 to 2. And 3 to 7. Yeah, that's much better looking. Um, everything's absolutely fine. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what do I want to do? I'm going to start this machine. I'm going to start that up again. Make sure everything has come back to us. And we're ready to configure the VRRP. So we're going to make these two machines look as if they are one machine. To our public and our private. Join me in a second for part five.